Hey, I'm Jake Davis. Um, I'm going to be doing a really cool 3D demo of some body mechanics. Um, and I'll be using a really cool Thor rig, which you can find. at either Wallet for Fun or uh, what's that company name? Uh, another, it's a large studio's um, rig. So it's, it's it's a really solid rig. Um, it's messing with it today. It's got some really fantastic controls on it with some really weird setups for like hand roll. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that will work with climbing because we'll be doing a lot of that in this scene so first i'm probably going to start working out where i want to do my block out for this and i did a little diagram earlier which is this here so i kind of want a Thor to basically run in from bottom of the screen, do a jump with some lightning, come up another jump, run across, do another little hop over, and then either do a slide or as a landing, and then run out of screen. So I find doing these type of diagrams really useful for figuring out what the character should be doing within these actions. Through a lot of this, I'll also be using a external camera, which will help me kind of figure out my framing um, before I do a finalized camera. So I'll generally put this off to the side. Oh, what, what really made me want to be an animator, right, is um, I found that going through all of these, you know, shows and, you know, animated elements that really spoke something to me, specifically like the movement, um, and I've always had a little bit of a fascination with it. Since end when I was doing uni, I kind of you know, I was struggling to figure out what I wanted to do. I liked doing concept art at the time, but then I started doing some animation and well, here I am.
So at the moment, all I'm going to be doing is moving the character into a position where it's just kind of in the vague spot. The posing doesn't really matter because we're after just getting him in the right places at the right times. Because this is just a general blocking stage, things will look pretty bad for a while. But after you've got your initial positions, you can kind of start working out, you know, if your frame ranges are correct for, you know, how fast a character should be moving through scene. Um, I would generally either work on fives or tens at this stage because it's an arbitrary number. It doesn't really matter. You can do it on every key, but I find doing it this way makes it easier to move your keys around later on. Um, I'm actually kind of more of a film animator at the moment, um, or short film, more likely. Um, I really wanted to start off doing game animation, but kind of just fell into this line of work and I've really enjoyed it because of the more long form nature of it. Now I'm going to do a really basic retime of the keys I've already got. Because at the moment, he is a very fast boy.
what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just making sure that the control that I'm using is actually contacting all the floor because that will help it when I'm moving the feet along this I can use uh, translate on zero so I will translate one on zero instead of having to manually match all of the planks on the floor because that's that's a real pain in the butt to manually do later on I'm also going to start adding some extra holds on positions where he should be stopping for a period of time before the action continues. I'm also just using uh, shift to highlight all of those sections. And another thing I will do is during this, I'll also use stepped mode. The step just basically means that you've got a uh, key and it's just going key to key opposed to having to do the in-betweens of all of those elements. And it's easier for block out opposed to doing it in spline because you get kind of distracted by, you know, how the motion looks at that time opposed to where your keys actually are. Uh, just then I use the up arrows on your keyboard to basically just go up and down in the rig so basically it starts selecting uh, elements within that rig that are up and down the hierarchy chain so I selected on the root and then I needed to go up because I wanted the uh, rig extra control I'll also start doing some just block-ins for how arcs kinda will look. They'll be very rough for now.
You'll tend to find, this, find that you spend a lot of time just looking at your screen, like figuring out what's going on with the motion. And it's good to reflect on those moments where you need to actually, you know, visualize your arcs and make sure that they're actually lining up how you want them to. This, this shot is most likely from start to finish. Depending on level of polish, could anywhere be 12 to 15 hours. Um, but I'm going to be doing this roughly over eight over the over the four weeks. So there'll be a little bit of time skip, but it will be only just polishing up poses and making it a little bit cleaner for the next stream. Right there, all I was doing was selecting all the keys and then using the handles on the end to basically drag them or shorten them. Um, I find this really useful for just getting your initial block ins. Or if you find out that a um, animation is too fast or too slow. Um, I find kind of the block out stage is one of the most enjoyable sections of animation. Um, but I also find that cleanup can kind of be also in that same boat mostly because of it's kind of relaxing going through the graph editor and just tweaking controls and I, I guess the final product also is a, a really nice thing to see at the end
Now all I'm doing is scrubbing the screen, uh, the timeline, just making sure that St. Helens makes sense. Another thing to do that is uh, really helpful is also changing what direction you're looking through camera, especially if you're just working on something that you're planning on changing the camera later on. Working in world space opposed to camera space. Because if I was working towards camera space for this shot, I would be disregarding where the character would be contacting and only where the camera could see. I want this to work in world space because then I can create some really cool funky camera angles and a couple of cuts to make a really interesting and dynamic shot. I'm also going to cut my frame range, yeah, about 160 frames. Of some handles so basically it allows me if I want to render say eight frames ahead of where the character is moving I'll still animate within those frames but it allows it so I have some backup in case I need to shift things around good practice is to actually start this at closer to a thousand and one opposed to one which I might just do before I forget So now I've got that set, it means that any time that I have to now send this off to either someone that's working in FX or anything, it allows them to have some frame range to fiddle with, as well as if you're getting directions from an art director, it allows you to go, hey, can we add 100 frames to the start of the animation? You have that frame range already set where it allows you to do so. Where if you start at one, that does cause some issues with some renderers. So what I'm going to do now, because I've kind of got a rough idea of where I want my character to be moving, I have a really rough idea of keys, I can start just going in and do some really key posing here. So like, I know I want the character when he reaches this stage to have a really interesting kind of just contact with the floor posing. So I'll just make sure I've got all this selected correctly. Go to the frame that he's still on the floor. Let's give him a little key, which is S on the keyboard. And before that, I'll also add a little bit forward. And I'll do another key. And this will basically be my crouch position, because I know I want, I want him to go up. So this will be the anticipation before he jumps. means I could probably drop all of these keys for translate down.
I am working with an IK spot, uh, IK spot on this, so sometimes you end up with some weird deformation within the back region. I'm also using IK for arms because I would like him to have some contact with the environment later on. I'll still continue working in stepped because stepped will basically just let me see the keyframes opposed to all the in-betweens which don't matter at this moment. So I'm going to change to world because I want to be able to position this in a world space opposed to local space or his actual position or the position of where the orients for the controls are. At the moment, I'm just trying to get his position so he's kind of a little bit squished on the floor. Just so when we get to the mid-air pose, it will feel like there's a drastic change and it feels like he's actually lifting off the air or into the air with a little bit more force. that I'll go for a mid-air pose, but first I'm just going to go here to the next pose because this is going to be closer to a landing position than the mid-air pose will be. So I'm trying to take advantage of the pose economy that I've already built up, which is, you know, the, the previous pose is nice and hunched, and I kind of want to keep that in this pose as well. And it allows me to save time animating because I've got very similar keyframes already. I'll also try to make event take advantage of contact poses, so making sure that the poses are actually contacting the environment I want them to. Because it will make doing the in-between poses a little bit easier because I've already put the work in now. I also notice that some of these, like this one right here, I might want to push up a little bit higher or a bit lower to try to really emphasize the arcs. Currently that 
does not read like it will have a nice transition with this one here. So either I have to bump him over this way a little bit more. Where I reckon I can get something a little bit closer now. Where his hand might be the thing that contacts. And it will help get him into this position. Just gonna give this a key. That was an accident of play balls. Thank you, my for wanting to play ball slot. <laughs> I'm going to delete that key because I'm, I'm kind of curious to see if when I change this to spline what the result's going to look like. Sometimes when you do things like with the spline you can kind of go okay I kind of want almost the end almost the end result of where it ends up. And that can kind of be a useful position for figuring out your pose. If my doesn't crash, there we go. Wonderful. And now if I change it back to stepped. Well, this might not be in the position, the, um, the rig extra that I'm using here. It is, at least, giving me elements that I would like. Which is the leg outstretched and the arm outstretched. And I can start using these to my advantage. Should also stretch him out slightly and to help really sell that he is pushed off and is moving at a speed. you want to counter animate the hips but in this case I think I'm gonna to have to suck up that I can't do that I can give them ulterior twists
One thing I have noticed I haven't done, I don't like about this rig is that the finger controls, if you want to have a curl, are at the very back of this hand and not all unified. It does have, a dis have its advantages, but uh, in this case, I think it might be a bit more detrimental. We're not going to focus too much on these hand controls yet, but... Just get a foundation. Are there any animated films that you've watched that you think did well in terms of movement? Oof. That's a that's a good question. Um, I mean, if you look back at most of the modern Disney, they have some really fantastic 3D animation. Um, the movement's pretty realistic. It's still stylized, but still got some really good heft and weight to it. Um, hmm. What else? Flowing and more, maybe more intricate movement, I'd have to say some of the Studio Ghibli films, but that's more 2D, so I just think they have some fantastic sense of movement and weight. To take advantage of the, um, the stretch controls on this rig right here just to really so that we've got some speed moving in here Right now I'm just checking that I've got the keys currently on the same frame as where I want them. on global I've also I've got it on the uh, main control for this character some of the um, contacts will be a little bit rough until I go through and key the um, uh, location so it's no longer attached just to the hip but it's enough to just get a rough guide of how I want things to look
can also start taking advantage of that cool roll control that I noticed earlier. It also, with this rig, because it's on IK, it also allows me to see where, you know, this, this shoulder would be not in a good way. So, you know, if you're moving that way, you'd start moving your back out, your rotation, and your spine. have a good move slightly. Right now I'm just trying to get this key post to look really nice. I think I'll have to worry about that elbow a little bit later. Uh, might be able to fix it with a bank, but it uh, doesn't look like I will. Maybe a little bit of a pivot like that might help. Yeah, that's definitely in a nicer position. probably see that it's getting a little bit nicer. It's still not fantastic, but it's 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 getting some of the elements into there that need to be there. I'd ideally like to start using the little lightning rig that comes with this rig. So there's a separate lot of rigs that come with this Thor rig, such as this little lightning bolt. And I think that'd be really cool to have him, you know, when he jumps, have a little bit of lightning coming with him. So I plan on using that specifically for this section over here. And possibly when he does his other jump over over this bridge and a little bit of a slide. So um, I just want those as little elements to come together. But first, the initial block out is Coming along pretty nicely for this first little bit. We'll worry about the run and the placement of the feet, specifically for this pause up here a little bit later, because I do want him to land on the opposite foot, opposed to this one, because it would look nicer if he's alternating his feet opposed to trying to use the same foot for push off as well as landing. Kind of helps with the overall rhythm. Now I want this one to be a contact pose where he lands. I'm wondering if I should push it so we have him in the air just a little bit longer over here, opposed to landing just yet. So it feels like he's like really pushed high into the air, and then when he lands it has a little bit more impact.
And if we try to keep him somewhere where his silhouette will re be really strong, we can have him have a really high, uh, interesting top pose, opposed to something that's coming in contact with a lot of random junk geo over here and all of that. And especially once we do some more dynamic cameras later on, and allow it to kind of get his silhouette in like a really dynamic, cool position. Especially if you have lightning coming up and he just holds this pose for a little bit. Another thing if I wanted to save some more key keyframe economy is thinking about animation on twos or a variant of threes, maybe fours, fives, and using a blend of them to create, you know, in increases and decreases in time. And as, an, and as an animator, you kind of want to not spend too long on things that don't really need to have animation on them. Or if they do need animation, hopefully, you know, it's only just like little things like you're following through an action you've already started. For example, if I was holding up here for, oh, what's that? Six frames. I'd probably have a in-between frame here where the character's getting to a rest position and following through from the action below or anticipating the landing that they're about to have. Because I want him to hold in the air, I'm going to come up with a really nice cool pose for him. Because we know he pushed off with this leg, we want to keep that leg as the extended. Even if it's not much, just a little bit. Because I've pushed uh, this character's back into a really awkward position, I'm going to reset some of it to zero, taking advantage of the fact that we've just transitioned through the air, and that the motion that just happened before it is very quick. It is good sometimes to do these reset frames, especially after a quick motion, just so you have control of all the actions that you're doing. Anything that you have to be careful of is when you're doing that. Um, keep an eye on your graph editor, mostly because I think these ones, for example, have done a flip. I believe the industry is always hiring juniors. Um, it just depends on what type of things are coming out at the moment. Um, say they're working on like a large budget film that has a lot of background characters for example they'll tend to hire a little bit more for juniors for those positions because it gives them experience as well as it doesn't clog up the work of all of the seniors but at the moment with COVID still in some places remote work has been popping up as well so I think the the industry is still hiring. Thank you. 
gonna try to push for a little slightly heavier landing on this one. Just so it feels like he's really pushing his weight into to the landing. If only these elbows wish to cooperate with that. Using a slightly weird um, control scheme for this uh, pull vector over here. I do find it kind of interesting because it's it is good. Like for the most part, especially on like um, when the arms aren't up. But in this case, it is not very nice. So I might have to just start ma adding manual keys to these. Just so we're keeping our action somewhat through a line. I'll also probably grab this clavicle and also give it up because his arm is up, so his clavicle should follow. As well as giving his spine just a little bit of twist. Now he's because he's above his target, we can also keep his head down. So he's always giving aim to where he's going to be. because the head will generally always guide where the body will be aiming to go. Uh, basically all I'm doing at the moment is doing a little body mechanics uh, animation. So this will be over the next couple of streams where I'll be going through and making this beautiful diagram which I have hidden away. One second. Which is this. So it's just a little sketch up of, you know, how I want the character to move through this environment. Um, so we'll just be doing a run, jump with some lightning, maybe speed it up, make it a little bit cool, do another run, jump over, do a slide, and then it would just run out of frame. I would like to add another key in through here. Maybe shorten the amount of time that he's up in the air and then add another one with a spline. Just see how the spline will look. So you can either do that through the graph editor or the uh, timeline depending on what you're doing for the spline or tangent. So you can just right click and then Tangents, spline, or stepped. Um, tend to always want to grab later in the frame because I want the snap to really show off with this. So I think I'll grab around there. Just do a key, go back into stepped. Bop. Bop. Yeah, cool. So now we're just trying to get some of those keys looking pretty cool. Um, I know that I want to have a landing, and I've already got a landing or an example for pre-prepped for landing, so I'm just going to copy the keys from this, because why not? Save myself some time, and as well as it matches very similarly to what I want to happen. So just trying to take advantage of work you've already done.
yeah, because this is going to be over the uh, four week, I'm probably going to spend a little bit of time outside of these, just doing some polish up on the keyframes, just because this type of animation might take a little bit longer than the stream allows. But hopefully by the final stream, we'll have a really cool final product. just where this landing happens just because I don't like the arc it's going to create because he's come kind of from this direction and I want him kind of to land more around there yeah I am um, I've been working there for a year and a half now We're going all the internal projects. Might also give this guy just a little bit of rotation on the global. I tend not to like animating on global, but because we're just doing something kind of interesting, eh, it just makes it a little bit easier. I'm also going to grab that run pose from earlier. Just because I know then what I should be expecting in those frames. looking so far. Still really blocky, but we're starting to get some of that timing in that we would like. Uh, these ones down here. These are a hammer and uh, lightning bolts. So the lightning I want to use later on, it's got some really cool little spline stuff to it, so it like jitters like lightning. You can kind of control it by a spline curve, which is invisible at the moment. Uh, boy, reference key of one, thank you. So as you see in there, there's just a little curve, and basically it's got a spline action to it, which you can change with the bolt frequency over here, which just has amplitude stuff. Um, really cool little thing that I really am looking forward to using. Um, this rig is free, so if you ever want to try it out yourself, go for it. I, I personally found it on... If I can bring up my webpage for it. Literally, you can just go to Google Thor Rig 2020. Because it was released in December of last year. Um... I originally found it on this website, but there's also um, another one which has the uh, hammer included. Cool. Ah, from Aragora, which is the um, original website. So they have a whole heap of bits and pieces on there and other stuff so feel free to look for yourself just go do some house cleaning on these couple of frames at the bottom because I've realised I've not kept them level on the floor whoops
Uh, I'd say this is more of an advanced rig only because it also includes facial rigs stuff. So he's got, it seems to have a really cool little face rig attached to him. Well, from my experience, like so far, this doesn't look too bad, but there is a lot of really finicky controls and slightly weird layout. Um, like the fingers, for example, have the curl on the end of the knuckle, which I don't particularly like, or um, there was something else that I found really weird. It's got like the IK controls on basically all of the arm things, which while useful, is a little bit intimidating for some people. back working on this pose because I don't like it it's it's nice for where it came from but I think it needs a little bit more work mostly to try to sell the you know the direction that he's just come from so what I might do is actually extend where this foot is just so he's like really trying to Keep himself from falling off this platform. Probably adjust his hips to match so he's actually really leaning on that as opposed to the other one. Also trying to find a nice position for these feet because that is not very appealing right there. Probably gonna add some toe roll just to just to liven up that pose. We could go for the cliche superhero landing if you really want with the extra handout. Again, I'd always start off trying to make my poses work in a 3D space opposed to working in a 2D space, only because it allows you the freedom later on if you need to move cameras and all of that. Especially if you have an art director that's like, oh no, I don't like the camera on uh, the left side of his body, can we put it on the right? And you've animated to uh, camera, you will have to spend the next two to three days trying to recreate what you did. Um, when I get into some of the finer stuff, I'll start using more reference. Uh, at the moment, I'm just kind of blocking out the idea I would like. Um, and then once I get to it, I'll start being like, okay, um, for this one, you know, there's a couple of scenes from Spider-Man that I can think of that would be fantastic. Um, there'd be a few from the Marvel Cinematic Universe that I think would be good for this as well, like I think Captain America's uh, superhero landing or using Deadpool as well, because they have that cliche one as well. Both of those would be really interesting for just this position, just trying to get the timing correct. Um, but for initial block out, I tend to either look at reference beforehand, or I do a little diagram where I'm like, okay, these are the actions I kind of want, and I'll just do some block out for it.
I really don't like how not powerful this is at the moment. I'm going to try to twist his body a little bit more. What type of references? Um, I try to find something with a still camera as much as possible. Um, I found that if you get cameras that are moving, you're, you kind of lose the emotion as to what the reference actually is. So if you can find something that hasn't got a moving camera, you're probably going to get a stronger and more reliable reference. Um, what another thing? There's, there's some channels on YouTube which actually have some um, anatomy reference stuff. It's actually really useful because they record the human body at a ridiculously high frame range, but also or frame rate. But at the same time, they record it to a grid, which is really nice for picking up like the nuanced detail in you know a person's body. But my my one recommendation would be a still camera. I think what's making this pose feel a bit weak is that leg. Don't feel it's quite hitting the. There we go. Quite hitting what I wanted. Sometimes you do have to fight with the rig a little bit to try to get something that's appealing. Um, some rigs work really well for finding that one pose that you just always want to hit. Then a few others just take a little bit more work. Especially when you've got like um, IK controls, specifically like the uh, pole vectors. Sometimes they can get a bit messy. It's like at the moment this would technically be contacting the floor. But it's clipping, so it's it's not quite of working how I would like it to. But I can also call it good enough for now and then come back again in the second pass. I definitely need to have a land pose in between these two. So just before he gets into this position where his feet contact first. Just so we have that blend. I reckon we could also probably push him a little bit closer on this pose. Yeah, I am, I am mostly using IK for this because I know I wanted to have a lot of contacts. Um, if I was only focusing on um, him in like doing, not doing any contact with the floor or anything like that, I would have stuck with FK. Just because the arcs and stuff would be stronger and nicer. But because I wanted to actually experience... Um, hand contacts on things like the walls and stuff and the floor I kind of wanted to take advantage of it uh, they might be bent controls didn't actually mess with that yet um, yes yes they are they are all bent controls this does have a really nice IK snap on the um, elbow which is Kinda rare to find, but also really nice. Also has some like volume controls and stuff to make sure the volume and stuff is holding up really nicely. Overall, this is a really solid rig. Um, didn't expect to find it, and I'm really glad I did. Ah, that will do for now. I'm just going to leave that pose there for now because I would like to have a blend between these two where he actually takes an extra step, settles and then goes off for the run. 
but we'll deal with that on a separate lot of keyframes. This one I want to kind of get really kind of preparing for him to do a slide. So I'm just trying to think how he's going to do his, his leap. I think I might actually just add an extra key in through here. Pop, pop, pop. Yeah, definitely add an extra key. Now this is just going to be a small anticipation, but I think it's going to be important to selling that he's about to do a jump as opposed to just running along. I'm thinking his feet will contact around on the very edge and then go for that leap for this one. It's not going to be a very exaggerated jump, but it's going to be a little bit different. One of the things I might do over the um, next stream is just do some studio library stuff. Studio Library is a really good time saver for when you're working with uh, cycles or other elements which you need to do repetitively. Um, and on top of that, it would be really good for just adding into these shots where he's moving through as just a run or something. So I'll do a little run cycle at some stage and then just give you guys a rundown on how it's basically done and then attach it and go from there. Um, kind of can be a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, generally what I'll do is I'll try to find the, for this, for example, this is very rough. Um, so what I might be doing is when I get to those sections where I do add a run cycle or a parts of a run cycle, um, I'll either choose the keyframe which matches closest to how I want it to look. So from here, I might grab a pose which, like, the front foot is the contact pose, so it would be close to something like this. Um, and then I would use Studio Library as a guide and then copy those poses over and blend between them. So I'd then be using spline and then cutting keys, inserting keys, etc. cetera, um, until I get back to the cycle, so to speak. And then you can do the same on the back end. It's a little bit finicky, but can pay off if you, you're you not too precious about your keyframes. Like the ones that are really going to be important to me are going to be the air poses and the contact poses. So, so far, like these sections in here, it's just me trying to figure out what footing I want him to come off on and all of that, more so than the actual motion that poses that are going to be there.
Another thing that you can do if you wanted to be a little bit tricksy is also use anim layers. Um, anim layers can be useful, but they can also cause a lot of headache if you're relying on them too heavily. What I tend to use for anim layers is like if I wanted the head, for example, to always be looking at, say, you know, something over there, um, then I would maybe do a pass with anim layers where he's like, you know, actually doing something else and then double checking over there but you can also just do that through offset groups if they have it so this one down here actually has an offset for the head um, which surprisingly is really useful I haven't seen any other rig so far have an offset for these elements but it would stop having to use or reduce the use of anim layers which is really good This is probably going to be the weakest pose that I've got here, mostly because I'm not quite sure how I want him to actually jump off of this yet. Because I do want him to do the slide, so I reckon the air pose is probably going to dictate how this is going to look. check that I've got keys on all these and stepped all right it appears this is where there's extra keys just hiding out hey there we go so one thing to note if you are working in stepped is Sometimes if you don't have keys, you'll have spline in there and things just look weird and you're not quite sure why. And that would be why. Because I want him pushing off with this foot, I'm just going to extend that backwards because that's the foot that should be in motion or carrying through the motion of the last action. And this is the foot that I want to prepare for landing. I'm just getting used to like managing what foot should be doing what at what time and alternating because that's how we as people tend to work. Um, is useful. There's always exceptions to the rules, but knowing when to break them is important. Some of those moments where I would break them is like if my character's about to contact on that side. So if he was about to run into a wall or something, like I did down here, you can kind of suck up, you know, what hands are getting ready to contact and stuff because of what side is closest to the object. A slide. I'm going to start getting his body ready to kind of just shift where his center of mass is. Because I want his center of mass to be behind instead of in front, you can start just giving hints of it by like pushing his spine further back, his chest further back. alternative thing I could do here is also put his body on a little bit more of a uh, diagonal lean. So I either push him all the way back this way or you could twist. Because I've got this so it's not orienting with the torso, 
I'd have to put follow orient on. And this is the orient, basically. So, something like that. Silhouetting is important, especially when you're going over large pieces like this. It looks silly and you kind of want to always keep your poses feeling strong and directional. So my slide might have to come more as a landing pose as opposed to giving the anticipation at the start. Interacting the motion that you're having with the, the bottom half in the hips. Then you always have that offset, which is always more interesting. Also, taking this advantage of the time to uh, reset some of these keys to zero just so everything's clean and easier to manage. I always find it good to check your graph editor as well. If you see any keys which look funky, you can always do a curve some Euler filter. So that generally all it does is if you have anything that's inverting or flipping, it can generally pick up when it's happening if it's only a handful of keys. Um, and it's it's good to do occasionally just in case. Stops your rotations freaking out and having weird interactions. checking if I should try some different posing for this air or if I should try to keep it consistent to the uh, previous jump but I think I'm gonna go with something that's just very simple but effective I find flicking through frames is uh, very useful for just double checking everything's going in the right arc. Still not enjoying this uh, top pose. I think it's kind of weak. Uh, it's not kind of having the uh, elements I'd like to have in there. And this is where FK has its advantages as opposed to IK. IK is fantastic for your contacts, but air posing, it just doesn't have the same um, weight or control that you sometimes need. Also trying to stay away from being too cliche with how he's moving in this section. I want to kind of keep that power and energy in through this. That's a nicer pose, but I still think it's lacking 
the momentum I'd like. But we can revisit that in a minute. I'd like to get the remaining couple of poses out so we can start having a look if that timing is going to make sense. Because I also would like to have some hold frames in here as well. I find hold frames make it really nice for kind of just showing that your character's got life and an alternative sense of time. And because these aren't step, that's causing some issues. The... Hey, there we go. Cool. So we can go back to my little reference cam that I have earlier. Definitely the start is feeling a little bit stronger. Like I really like that little transition in through there and I'd like to add more of that in through here as well. Which means this pose is the one that's kind of lacking the energy that I would like to have in it. It's good to go back and forth between your keys just to make sure that you are hitting the beats that you'd like to. Um, I remember when I started animating, I got feedback by uh, one of the guys back here. And I learned that, you know, just messing with timing and like thinking of it more as, uh, just doodled it over the top of this one. So thinking of it as like little, like offsetting loops is really nice. You know, I think here of like little elements that don't keep the timing consistent. Um, and that's kind of stuck with me as like this shape and movement and rhythm that you should be trying to get, opposed to trying to just continually make things smooth and lose the energy that they're meant to have. Yeah, it was um, actually Ned, who's one of the concept artists, and it was like, for some reason that just clicked with me, opposed to some of the animation teaching. And I was like, okay, I get it now. Don't know why it never clicked before, but that, that was what kind of all just pushed it all together for me. I was thinking of that rhythm and motion a little bit stronger. do here because I'm being a little bit of a pain in the butt is not ghosting um, maybe I do want ghosting yeah let's just go selected normally what I do for this is use studio uh, not studio library uh, animbot animbot has a really nice um, curve tool for it Oh, don't crash. Hey. Um, and it basically allows you to draw arcs with your, like, movement. Ghosting does the job, but I do find it a little bit more performance heavy than I would like. I 
Ah, there we go. Editable motion trail. That's what I was after. E. And show. Really? You're not going to show my motion trail? Okay, keep your secrets then. Um, yeah, so I tend to use uh, motion trails a lot, especially when working in scenes with arcs and jumps, only because it allows you to have a little bit more control of, you know, where the motion is actually going. Also might make it so he's a little less uh, Mario jumpy here, because that's just not very pleasant to look at. Might give it so he's got a little bit more forward momentum, and that's why he has to slide. Yeah. Now this is where I want to have my slide frame, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to rotate this control this way in the direction that I want him to be facing just because it'll make things easier in the long run then I can do the same for this one I do tend to find that doing it this way you do end up with um issues when you're trying to retime your um, movement because it's not specifically done on the main controls and it can make the graph editor a little bit funky um, but for doing passes like this I don't think it's too much of a problem Now we're going to do quite the opposite of a superhero landing. We're going to really just make it a little bit uncomfortable how he's landed because we want him to adjust his speed very rapidly on top of we want him to change direction. feet reasonably close together and we're going to take advantage of his hips and his chest which I'm going to change back to orient one just for this just because then it's following this main controller down here and we go really push him down on the ground so he's like really forcing himself also grab this one and either put it up high and on a lean, which we'll do through the foot control and pose to the actual ankle, just because if you do it on the ankle, you start ending up with some weird things with your translates and your rotates. And it's a lot more work to counter animate than it is to actually just use the controls which are built into the rig. also depend on the rig that you're using. Some rigs will play nicer with using just manual rotates on that control opposed to using the inbuilt controls, whereas others will completely break. I'm going to also put his hand down to try to really sell that he's pushing all of his energy into stopping. And because we want him to kind of feel like his energy is transferring to going down, we can also start moving his hips and body a little bit more. Give 
giving him that angular direction. One thing that would really help is once I start like doing hand posing for this. So when his like hands are outstretched or digging into the wood. Depending on how much time we might also do a face pass. save all the time because you the one time you don't save you will lose everything yeah. I'm just looking at my hips and noticing that like I really need to start pushing how I want those to look and figuring out how I want to counter it with the upper body. And I'm thinking doing something like that because you start ending up with this really long, elongated body, which from further away it would look really nice and dynamic. And pushing for dynamic poses is really important with animation because the more exaggerated dynamics you have, the more realistic it will feel, or the more well timed and placed it will feel, opposed to just going for some standardized posing. Also keeping in mind where the center of mass is for people is important. So if your character's about to fall over, think of where their hands will be going what that body we trying to do to counteract that weight. Realistically, I'm thinking I should probably also push that foot backwards a little bit more. And then if we move him a little bit more out this way, now getting three points of contact and they're a little bit more separated out, which is a little bit more stable opposed to being all on one line. Again, I will have to do a secondary pass with these hands, only because I've done these all under the wrong, so they're not on global, they're on main, which is meaning that I'll have to manually hand animate these instead of just setting and forgetting. But that's something that can happen afterwards because it's a it's a process with keying um, what they're targeted to, and they're a good time that I'll start doing those switches when they're in the air. Only because the air switches allow you to have some really fast motion with some settle um, and you kind of hide your switches that way. You want to kind of take advantage of your own motions as much as you possibly can for um, doing your hiding of technical things. Just because it's less likely people will notice when you're doing the fast motion opposed to a slow, subtle motion. At the moment, I'm just trying to find a nice position for his other hand. I'm wondering if I can get behind him to read really nicely. Alternatively, if I really wanted to, I could have it outstretched, like he's trying to s stabilize himself. 
But I think something like that really keeps the energy going and we can try to keep it more on a horizontal line opposed to where it is at the moment. So if I just bring him down a little bit lower, get this tone, rotate it a little bit more. I like that. We get closer and closer to a really nice pose that we really like. Starting to like the energy in this part. There's certain things that are really not working for it. That's very close to where it should be. Like personally, I need to probably do it past these shoulders. Just making sure they're kind of working together. But I also need his mass on his elbow to be a little bit stronger. Because we really wanted to show that he's like putting weight on this arm, opposed to just resting on it. Try to give his head just a little bit more dynamic look of where he's going. What we'll do is we'll just grab all of these. Ooh, not all that, all this. We'll deselect those controls because we want it to slide. We'll just copy it over, put it on this key. Oop, Bob's your uncle. You've got this, a very simple slide just here. And when you get to the second part of the slide, we can now just start adjusting it that he's now gaining a little bit more control of what he's doing. And one way to do that is literally just grabbing this control here, pushing it up. Up. And then you can hyperextend this arm to like really emphasize that he's getting the lift off from it. You can also, because he was sliding, if you really wanted to, you can take this advantage to kind of resettle where the feet are going to be. You can start removing like the um, roll into the toes because he's gaining control. just making the stance slightly more solid. And you can start pushing the weight where you want it to be. taking advantage of this rig because it has this beautiful little hand roll section I'd start using the hand roll maybe not minus 90 but about there just because this has some nice effects on the fingers and it saves you some anim work Just like the eye line, like where the eye line will be, hands as well. Because he's coming into a settled position, you can start like 
bringing out elements that were currently tight and now relaxing, or elements that were um, tight can start relaxing, just so you get a little bit of contrast in your animation. Now if we go to our beautiful idea cam, probably just see how this all starts looking together. I'm starting to get the block out mostly done now. Only thing's left is another little jump pose in through here. The run cycle for that bit and another jump pose there. If we really wanted to get fancy, we could possibly replace this roof run with something a little bit more interesting. Maybe a little pole swing or something later on. But I think getting these nail of those three at least is important. Just gonna block in the last couple of bits and pieces here. Right, I'm probably gonna have to go wireframe, only because the uh, legs have decided to go inside the building. Basically, all I'm gonna do is pull them out of there. Take advantage of Maya's tools when you have it. Mostly because, you know, you're working in Geo all, all the time and sometimes things does, does, do tend to get inside of other Geo and controls can get obscured. Um, one thing that can be helpful for some people is taking advantage of Maya's Mel stuff with the script editor for selections of um, controls and then making like little toolbars up top. Just way on my to think. Or crash. Could be crash. Anyway, well, thank you all for coming. I hope you've had a fantastic viewing of 3D animation. And see you all later.